I wholly understand at present I don't have enough viewership to actually continue with this, but you know what? This is what I want to do. I really don't care. That seems to be what I say a lot these days, and I just don't care. Oh, I'm not going to get any personal reasons about why I just despise drugs and alcohol. Um, you notice I didn't say tobacco. I do despise certain forms of tobacco. Snooze, chew, chaw, whatever you want to call it. Stuff like that. And cigarettes. I do not like cigarettes. I only like cigars and uh, pipes. But, um, oh, about, if you want to get my take, um, what do you call it? Uh, I don't believe in um, legalizing drugs to a harsh uh, extent. What what does a person learn that somebody has, um, you know, it doesn't make any sense. That's all I'm saying. It doesn't make any sense to, you know, maybe maybe a couple of days in jail. Same thing for public drunkenness. You know, make them do something out of inconvenience or whatever. That, that's what I say. Which leads me to today's topic. Now, Vampire Mike, uh, Sega CD Universe. Uh, I don't know how you want to find it. I would go with Sega CD Universe if you want to contact Vampire Mike. And I sent him a... Um, and this is also from... Uh, Hello, I, I'm a pizza. That's a YouTuber. Hello, I'm a pizza. Uh, disclosure. Both Vampire Mike and Hello, I'm a pizza are friends of mine that I've met over the internet. Uh, I've known Vampire Mike over a decade. And, uh, Hello, I'm a Pizza, um, I've known, oh, about three, four years now? Maybe, maybe I've known about him for three or four years. And I think we've been talking for one and a half or two. Well, not really talking, it's, uh, it's email. Eventually I would like to go ahead and, you know, talk to him. And, yeah, there are other YouTubers out there, but, um, the reason I bring these two up is from Hello, I'm a Pizza. He specializes in PSA videos and so forth and so on. He's not the only one, but he, to me, is the best one. And uh, from this point on, he'll be called Pizza, and Sega CD Universe will be called Vampire Mike. I assume my audience and my future audience who may listen to this are intelligent enough. I don't know how to get more views. I just don't. I think I'm being blackballed by YouTube in all complete utter honesty because that's what it looks like I only go on results so going back to the whole uh, why the PSAs and drugs and stuff like that so I'm, what people don't understand is I'm not against drugs but at the same time it, I am against drugs okay? well, if one of my friends died due to drugs or threw their lives away due to drugs or in a position of their lives where they shouldn't be on drugs but they're wasting precious money or or prostituting themselves for drugs, then absolutely drugs are destructive. That's no different than somebody doing the same thing for booze or doing the same thing uh, for cigarettes or any other thing. If somebody, you know, it's wrong if somebody prostitutes themselves uh, in order to get a video game or a car or anything like that. Now, there's a difference between a prostitute and, and a sex performer. Sex industry worker, sometimes they're called. Um, you know, like, you know, certain porn stars, they may have started off in the prostitution side, but eventually they can establish themselves in, in better positions where it, it is a profession. It You might consider it gross. You might consider it intriguing. But nonetheless, you know, that's where they are now. Unfortunately, though, in pornography, from just my understanding of research, I'm not saying that this is true or untrue, but um, a lot of these uh, performers, male and female, end up on, on the drug side or other health problems or something like that. Not all, but a good number of them are. And um, I have nothing but pity for that because... Essentially, what happens is everything's getting to the same area where a person prostitutes themselves. And um, that's all it comes down to. A person has to know them between uh, prostituting, bastardization, 
and uh, entrepreneurial ship. If you're on YouTube and you've monetized your YouTube channel, that's entrepreneurial ship. And you can do whatever you want with your money as long as it's behind closed doors. You can do anything you want with your life. So, why do I bring that up? These anti-drug PSAs are not behind closed doors. They decided to take an in-your-face approach to it uh, back when um, I was a child. Now, I need to clarify about PSAs overall. I don't know when it started, but at some point in the 1960s, when the television industry actually matured to where we can recognize it today in broadcast, PSAs were obviously required to be aired. A certain number of PSAs had to be aired, put on the uh, traffic engineering logs, and then those had to be printed out and submitted to the FCC to prove that the station was meeting its uh, communal uh, standards and duty by informing the public of certain issues. If that means that right before the station goes off the air, let's say, let's say I, I'm in um, Pahrump and I have a Pahrump station in 1965, and you know that means I can air all my PSAs at 11:30 to midnight and then turn off the transmitter till seven in the morning. And that's essentially what they did at these stations. And that's documented proof. You can go get the uh, records probably from the National Archives, or you can request the records as public information from the FCC. Since it's not top priority, other than going to court and forcing them to produce the records on this kind of research, they're not going to give you the records. They're not even going to respond to your email. Or we, if you make a phone call, that's one thing. You send a certified letter, yeah. Email, they're, they're not going to bother. Or if they do bother, it'll be you know, a real static statement. Like, well, we have them, but, you know, no. Um... But that's uh, what happened. Now, the scariest PSAs, believe it or not, it just by how they were presented and everything, would have to be from 1965 to 1985. That's my opinion. A lot of them were raw, or at least preserved raw. And they were really in, in the face of people. It gives them nightmares to think about it. Uh, as does the emergency broadcast system, but I'm not here to talk about that entirely, though that does fall under a public service announcement. Today, it's a damn shame to see the phrase public service announcement abused by, uh, mostly I see it abused by video game websites. That is not an announcement that's in the public service. See, gamers aren't the public. Gamers are consumers. It should be called a consumer alert. That's what news agencies do. Um, other things that count as a public service announcement uh, that, you know, not scary or anything like a community billboard or something like that. But I'm here to address the uh, address the Partnership for Drug-Free America, which should be called either a Partnership for a Drug-Fueled America. Uh, today it's called the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids, I think. That's what it's called. But the point is, it is was wholly ineffective and to this day I don't know how the partnership exists I don't I don't see their PSAs on on YouTube I do have an, a, a um, I do have access to PSAs but I don't get any PSAs from them I did get one PSA from them for the time machine which was the uh, fried egg for 2016 but I I really didn't have any access to any of their PSAs and when I requested uh, some of their PSAs, they didn't bother. Um, there's a thing that says 1,000 in one commercials or something like that. I actually had this collection and I gave it away. I watched all the pro public service announcements on it. The quality sucked. That's why I gave it away. It's the same quality on YouTube. You know, the partnership wasn't responsible for like the Pee Wee Herman crack cocaine ad or the Charlie, no, not Charlie, um, Clint Eastwood one or anything like that. Partnership is mainly known for this is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Well, the egg fries. They weren't responsible for you have the right to say no and, you know, everyone's singing and dancing and stuff like that around a convertible in a movie theater in some weird world. Uh, that wasn't it. The partnership had nothing to do with using heroin as a monkey on your back or anything like that. These are all scary nonetheless, and there are 
scarier ones from outside the United States, especially the UK. Um, I don't know if it's some kind of uh, maybe maybe pizza can clarify this because I'm going to link them this uh, conversation. But you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is about um, the uh, Dominion states having, uh, or the Commonwealth having much more scarier, scarier PSAs than the United States. Uh, Canada even has scarier ones. As um, Nostalgia Critic covers that, uh, he has top eleven PSAs. Go ahead and give that a watch. I'm providing no links. This is up to you to listen and to find it on your own as as an intelligent person. I, I believe everyone's intelligent. I'm very naive and optimistic that way. Actually, I believe everyone's not intelligent. <laughs> but I, I'm going to push intelligence and make everyone intelligent because that's all critical thinking is. Critical thinking develops common sense. Common sense develops uh, entrepreneurial tendencies. Entrepreneurial tendencies equal success. And if your idea of success is to run a business so you can have a lot of money, and with that money you want to blow it off on cocaine, meth, and, and women, God bless you. Just don't interfere with my life, where I want absolutely nothing to do with that, where I just want to sit around in comfortable overalls, scaring my wits out of myself with um, Coca-Cola. I don't know what I mean by that, but it sounds funny. So, the first anti-drug PSA I remember that's like etched in my memory is the stupid one where the kids are singing and dancing and they have radioactive drugs and there's this guy with a hat. I used to tell everyone that's vanilla ice. Um, I don't have anything against uh, Rob Van Winkle. I don't even know him. If I... There, there's a chance I may have met him at the Hard Rock Hotel eons ago, um, and it would be nothing more than a handshake. Same with, I don't know, Richard Lewis, Dean Kane, whatever. Uh, celebrities, me, yeah, I never really recognize them. I, I don't even recognize myself if I was a celebrity. But that's the one I remember. I remember telling people, I think that's Vanilla Ice in it. That thing aired forever. That's why it's at the time machine. It aired on Saturday mornings. It aired forever. And um, I think the last time I actually saw this uh, dancing PSA, which I, I, I don't know, do I have a right to say no? Was um, shortly after 9-11. It was still on ABC. ABC was still airing. And then it just kind of diminished after that. The second one I we all obviously remember is this is your brain on drugs. Any questions with the fried egg? The other one I remember just scares the living shit out of me. And that's kind of why I'm talking about this. Uh, right after I'm done with this conversation, I'm actually leaving the house. Um, and I won't be back. I, um, I get frightened very, very easily. And once a year, I revisit these PSAs. To frighten myself, some form of mutilation or something like that of my brain. So, anyways, um, yeah, yeah, I remember the um, fried egg, the puppet strings. I remember it. Why do I remember it though? Is because it got recorded. Now, there's other ones I have recorded. The um, I have this also on the time machine. It's the one where the the dancer collapses, and someone said I didn't know I was watching a David Lynch. Uh, film, yeah, that one, that one scared me. And I'm going by memory on what scares me. I'm not going to look at what I've posted because some things just, you know, went in one ear out the other. I do remember the second egg one with Rachel Lee Cook, which Robot Chicken corrected. And um, I, I do remember her breaking everything. Is that what heroin really does? Is that effective to get the message out that that's what heroin is? No, the, the effective one, though, I never saw this. Um, I do have proof that stations did air it because it's a, I think it's a full two or four minutes. It shows this guy. And um, <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I got a, I got a funny text message. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to backtrack here, but uh, let me let me backtrack. Yeah, I don't think any of these were affected, except for this one where this guy is he's talking to the camera and he's shooting up heroin and he says, "Come back in a year." And I believe that one aired just to completely eat up a block. And there is cursing in it, so I do believe it was meant to air after 10 p.m., meaning it's late night program. The Puppet Strings one aired during the daytime. Now, a scary non-drug PSA would be the uh, Red China one, also at the Time Machine. And uh, I saw a different PSA involving this girl about texting and driving. She takes a cell phone out. Um, I do remember ones like drinking. I consider the dr- alcohol ones also also part of the anti-drug campaign. Because, uh, you know, that's what booze is. Booze is a drug. I, I don't care what anyone says. It's legalized, sure, but it's a drug nonetheless. So what, what do we have here when, you know, drinking and driving kills a friendship? <laughs> and um, there's the other one I do remember where the kids turn into skeletons in the car um, I did see a video in driver's ed um, these things are scary there's one I mean it's just disgusting I don't even want to talk about the older one in the newer one it showed four bodies smoldering a kids who are our age now it was filmed back in 1986 or 87 I think 87 or 88 maybe so 86, 87, 88 judging by how the camera work looks and it definitely um well, that's... I don't know. Does it prevent me from drinking and driving? No. I don't drink and drive. I don't get high and drive. Because my dad was killed by a drunk driver. And that's the same as you know, as if he was killed uh, by someone doing drugs. Um, I, I had a friend who got in a car accident and high off, high off her ass on marijuana. She wouldn't have gotten in the car accident... If she decided not to be on marijuana. So if a person wants to go home and toke up a bowl, okay, whatever. But if a person doesn't have any money, now I understand the whole poverty argument. So why is it poverty equals drugs? I don't understand that one. Because if I don't have any money, I think I want to eat more than I want to get high. Okay, obviously I'm speaking from a perspective because I don't get high. I smoke a strong cigar every now and then that relaxes me. Marijuana has no effect on me, so I can get drunk. That's that. That's the closest I could say, right? And um, hold on, I gotta answer this text. <laughs> and um. Being drunk is the closest I could tell you. Um, when I've had drugs administered to me in in a hospital, I usually just fall asleep. So, using um, "Hello, I'm a Pizza's" anti-drug list here, uh, are any of these effective? Well, they're effective at scaring people. They're mini horror movies. It's like a I've seen some PSAs. There's like this one. Um, I don't know if Pizza has this or not, but there's like this one where this lady's like walking on the railroad tracks, and this other lady's narrating about it. That, the, 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 what? That's a PSA for not walking on railroad tracks. Um, there's this one where it's like uh, doing drugs makes you lightheaded and fuzzy, and then they flood the room with water. What? You're comparing that to drowning? Um, one that makes sense, but is, again, not effective. If you're taking drugs, you better know what you're jumping into. And then the girl jumps in an empty pool. What? <laughs> no, I, I don't I don't think so, no. Um, there's this one from Canada. It's the first one on his thing. The, the, the drug dealer's eyes, those are just scary. That will give you nightmares. What? <laughs> There's another one out of Canada where these people are singing drugs, drugs, drugs. What? <laughs> There's these other ones where these pills or these Muppet pills are singing like, don't take us, we're Muppets. What? 
There's this other one where about putting things in your mouth. What? <laughs> Again with Muppets, not the Jim Hansen Muppets. Um, are any of these effective? I don't think a damn one of these is effective. Oh, man. No, no. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Yeah. Can I get a side order of bacon, some flapjacks with boysenberry syrup from Knott's Berry Farm? And, um, oh, you know what? Forget that. Can I have some chicken and waffles with my brain on drugs? Yeah. I mean, come on. And then that leads to things. Uh, nope, not going there on that topic. Sorry. No, tell, I'm telling my brain that, which is not on drugs. It's on caffeine. Well, see, caffeine's a drug. I do do a drug. I do. The, I, I drink caffeinated drinks. And then I, I pee them out within 15 minutes. I drink energy drinks, and then I pee them out within 15 minutes. I can't. I guess I can't absorb anything with caffeine in it. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. Let's try to find out. Um, we all we obviously know the singing and dancing kids in front of the movie theater with the guy in the hat and the Corvette. That's not effective. What about this one? What are you in here for? Uh, um, tonsillitis? Appendicitis? Yeah, oh, no one's had tonsillitis here for a long time. Appendicitis? Let's see if I can still cut a straight line. <laughs> no, really, that, that's almost verbatim. <laughs> I mean, I mean, really. <laughs> <laughs> that was on like copies of Terminator 2 when we rented it from Blockbuster. I've seen I've seen other ones. Like there's this one where there's like cocaine and this woman snorting it or woman. This person snorting it off screen and it's like, "Hi honey, I I left you $10 and uh you quit sucker." Hi. What? And and then um, let's see what's a I'm going by memory here. There's this one where they say pot's gonna affect my memory. I uh, I uh, 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 I have that one up on the time machine. Tommy thinks he's so cool because he does pot. I have that one on the time machine. These aren't effective. There's no way to stop people from doing drugs. And these PSAs can't do it. All they did was scare people children who saw them maybe there's adults out there i'm an adult and i'm i'm frightened by this because i saw these as children yeah there's other scary psas i mean what where did this trend begin with the old psas we're gonna scare the living shit out of you what why there was one i had uh, there was a, a psa i i have not found and i don't want to see where there's like this person being buried alive and these people looking at him and you can see it from the perspective of the grave frightening absolutely frightening I only saw that one air once or twice in Las Vegas but in Texas that thing was on all the time and this is from 1980 to 1985 I lived in Texas and I've been in 1985 ever since um, in Nevada southern nevada prump in las vegas so uh this one was just scary okay i'll read i'll describe it again it's from the perspective of a grave and these people are looking down but you can't see their faces they're silhouetted but they're looking down this one's so not a real silhouette they're just not there's no light on their faces one even has pigtails in a scary way and the and, and I don't know what the narrator's talking about because I have, like I said, I haven't seen this since 1986 here in Las Vegas. And, you know, the, it's getting buried. And they even zoom in closer. The camera even zooms in closer on the one with pigtails. Why? I don't even know what it's for. There was another one about um, climbing power poles, and that was scary. Go beep, beep, beep. Uh, other things that scare me, like, of course, emergency broadcast system, tornado warnings, um, stuff like that. There was, like, a one channel had whirl, and then they had a little tornado icon with the word whirl in it. Another one would just put a little tornado at the bottom. They were both at the uh, bottom right of the screen. Those scared me. Those are public service announcements. Uh, anyone that's informing me that there, there's a fucking twister out there, and I, I might want to take some precautions for that. 
that's why I can't go back to um, Central Texas. I mean, I know tornadoes can hit anywhere. Believe me, I know this. Um, it, it one hit in Pahrump and I chased it. But I'm actually scared to death of tornadoes. I don't know why. I, I chased it in bare feet. I even have the photo. Um, photo will be given by request uh, because it's somewhere on my Google Drive. But, yeah, um, I, I don't understand these, these PSAs. What was it for? What, was, it, was it for drugs? Um, the, the monkey on the back, was that effective? Well, n- no. So, public service announcements, um, unfortunately, have completely dried up in the United States. And um, one of the scarier ones I have is for uh, cigarettes. And it's at the time machine. And it has these kids. And just look at the face on the kids. That's what's scary about it. What is wrong with these kids? I'm like, I put it up there because it did. I first I thought it wasn't scary, but wow, it's scary. I'm not here to frighten people at the time machine or anything like that. And um, believe it or not, it's actually a mental challenge for me to go ahead and talk about this because I'm actually scared to death of these PSAs. I am going to provide a link. To uh, hello, I'm a pizza's uh, PSA. Um, pizza's PSA for if I repeat myself a lot or whatever, it's either I'm going to have old timer's disease or whatever it's called when I get older, or I just repeat myself a lot because I do. So, definitely his top 50 anti drug PSAs and his top 50 um, PSA, scariest PSAs, United States and Canada. So that's the first half of this show. The uh, second half of the show, is there anything? Um, While I've been harsh on the Nintendo Switch, I am in the minority. I see a lot of people all gung-ho about it. So I had a problem today. I turned on my PS4. And while I do like the games I own, I was not enjoying the games on the system. That means that there's a problem with the PS4. As um, was it Rageaholic or Alpha Omega Sin or both who pointed that out? I haven't watched. In all honesty, I haven't watched Alpha Omega Sin's uh, show, his YouTube videos for quite a while. Um, I mean, I thought I go around in circles or whatever. I guess we all do. I think we all do. But uh, I think Rageaholic, Razor Fist, I think he pointed out how this generation, um, there's things that I don't understand. There's such a lack of games. Now, here's something. I don't want to hear anyone ever talk about a so-called games drought, but I've already addressed this. Uh, a drought can only happen in weather. You mean if there's no game releases? Well, it happens to movies and television and music, too. Uh, there's plenty to buy, I, but... You know, video gamers, it is a drug in a way because they, they're constantly having to buy more and more. And then when the companies ram them up the ass without lube or courtesy reach around, they they want more of that pain. I don't. And um, I'm extremely picky on what I buy. Right now, hey, there's nothing for me I want. Nothing. Um... I'm waiting for Breath of the Wild, and I want it on Wii U, and uh, it's just that simple. I'm probably going to go to the Meadows Mall GameStop and ask uh, the staff there if I can at least reserve a copy and then uh, and maybe pay a third of it down or something like that. Because, um, yeah, uh, other than anticipating that, Zelda game. I really, uh, there's nothing really on my horizon. I also want to, I do want a link, a link between worlds and Triforce Heroes, but I'm not in a hurry to get anything. Um, Breath of the Wild. Will, will, I'm not even making videos from it. Can't, can't touch Nintendo. No sir. Um, now that uh, I've approached actually nearly half of um, what I like to do is give you an hour. What the hell do I have next? Well, maybe I, I only have a half an hour here. And um, you know what? That's fine. Okay, coffee for Binky at gmail.com, or you can donate to the Patreon to help this show get way, way better. That's coffee for Binky, C O F F E E, number four, B I N K Y, at gmail.com.